The following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. Hello, everybody, and welcome into another another episode of Rising to the Occasion. We're very excited to get into some sports that are happening. We're going to talk about some college football news and updates. Yes, I know it's the offseason, but we're still going to talk about it. We're going to get there and get to it. And we've got plenty to talk about when it comes to the NFL. And then we've also got a big UFC card coming this weekend, a very exciting one to talk about. So we're going to talk about all of this and much more today on Rising to the Occasion. But before we get into it, first, want to let you guys know one of the sponsors for this episode, and that is SeatGeek. SeatGeek uh, is absolutely the place to go if you're a fan of live events, whether it's sports or music. Uh, or if you're a fan of theater, you know how challenging it can be to find the right tickets at the right price, and that's where SeatGeek comes into play. With a seamless mobile experience, SeatGeek allows you to buy and sell tickets in just two taps. It doesn't get any simpler than that, guys. But it gets even better because SeatGeek grades every ticket from red to green based on value. So if you're looking through and see a red, you know it's not a great deal, and you can get a better deal. But if you're looking through and all of a sudden, there you are, there you go, you find a, a green dot, you know it's a great deal. Yellow means you can keep on searching for some of those green dots, but they make it very easy to find a good deal and also be able to find your tickets that you need. Plus, every purchase is fully guaranteed, so you can shop securely with a complete peace of mind, knowing that the tickets that you buy are going to work and they're going to be good tickets. They're going to be something that you can actually go up and scan the first try without having to deal with any kind of scams or anything like that. Now, we have we love SeatGeek so much that we want you guys to use it. We want you guys to be able to, to use SeatGeek and see how great it is and how much better it is than every other ticket platform. Uh, and so we've partnered up with them to give you guys an amazing offer. You can use our code R2TO at checkout for $20 off your next ticket purchase. That's right, just download the SeatGeek app or go to SeatGeek.com and pick out those perfect tickets and enter the promo code R2TO for an awesome $20 off your next ticket purchase. So go check it out. Uh, you can check out either on the app or going to SeatGeek.com. And again, use that code R2TO. That's R number two, uh, and then uh, the letter T and the letter O. Use that for $20 off. It's an amazing deal, guys. Go check it out. Uh, life is an event. An event. Uh, and if you're looking for an event to go to, SeatGeek is where you can get your tickets. But uh, let's go ahead and get into it and first bring in my co-host for this evening. We've got Jeremy joining me from the other side of Sioux City. Um, man, it's it's an exciting time right now when you think of everything going on in the, in the NFL. The playoffs have shaped out to be a very fun one so far. Uh, and then, of course, some college football news we'll get to. But the UFC, man, uh, I'm, I'm very excited for this weekend. I'm we're, we're pretty big UFC fans. We love to watch the UFC, especially when there's a big card coming. And so I th think that's that's it's pretty pretty exciting right time right now to look around at the sports world. Yeah, absolutely. For the obviously for UFC 297 coming up the second weekend, like you said, we got the, don't give me crap, everybody, because I suck at saying names. We always got Raquel Pennington versus. Myra Bueno Sleep Sylvia, excuse me. Silva. Then Silva. Like I yep. said, I suck at names, everybody, so give me a break. Then obviously we got the Strickland versus Duplessis fight. Yep. Then of course we'll have the middleweight title going on. But looking outside of USC, it's definitely been a really fun lead up to the divisional rounds, to say the least, obviously, for the Packers and the Dallas Cowboys and the Battle of the Oklahoma quarterbacks. That was a, both of the, all the games are really fun to watch. Then just what we got, obviously, for you guys, ladies and gentlemen, it's really going to be a fun lineup. So I'm going to cut the chit chat and let's get rolling with the job. Yeah, man. I mean, it's it's really exciting. But of course, if you're watching on YouTube, man, we have grown so much and we're so excited for all of the growth that we've seen so far to kick well, off 2024. Guys. It's been really amazing. We've we've climbed up to where we're pushing 27,000 now all of a sudden. Uh, it's just insane to see the growth that we've seen over there. So we just want to remind you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and hit that like button. The like button and commenting down below helps us more than you would realize. Uh, so please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button over there. And you can always follow us on social media too. We want to see mm -hmm. more of you guys commenting on our stuff on social media, uh, reaching out to us. Uh, and we, we love to, to interact with our audience. But let's get into college football news first, starting off there. Um, and before we get too far into it, want to announce some big news. We've gotten a date, a date for the release of EA Sports College Football. It used to be known as NCAA 14 was the last one that came out. Uh, my all-time favorite video game. The and I honestly think 14 might have been the best one that they created so far. They're, they're, they're building up a huge suspense for this. 
And so if they end up letting us down with a crappy game or if it's just a Madden with NCAA skins, basically, it's it's going to be very disappointing. Uh, and mm-hmm. so we have a release date now, though. It is June 12th this year. They're going to release that. So it's exciting. Uh, I mean, I've, I've been looking forward to this since 2015, really. Uh, when mm-hmm. they <laughs> when they stopped making these games, uh, you know, I just even even before that, I mean, just growing up, that was that was like the only game I played as a kid, uh, playing all these NCAA games, playing as my my favorite college team. Or every once in a while, there would just be like a small college team that I would love to build up in a dynasty mode or uh, playing Road to Glory. I mean, who doesn't want to create yourself, put yourself in your high school uniform, and then go on to play for a college? Pick your college. So you have to earn earn a scholarship. Pick your college. Go on, uh, and then there used to even be a, a a part where you could even transfer that over to Madden, to where you get drafted and all that. So I mean, they did. It was all time favorite. Uh, Jeremy, I know you were more of a hockey guy slash. Uh, whenever you were younger, you even played quite a bit of, uh, you know, some of the Call of Duty and stuff like that too. But uh, how excited are you for this college football to drop? Yeah, I mean, I was I was always in NHL. Like you said, we would always sit around and play NHL. But I mean, so we played a lot of, of college football together. But I mean, I, I'm not going to lie, Josh. Once I saw this come out, I first thought it was like a joke because you see a lot of stuff like this pop up on social media and stuff. But obviously seeing that is truly legitimate. I'm really, really looking forward to getting into my hands on it just because, like you said, it's been so long since we've had a game like this. I mean, yeah, we see Call of Duties come out. We see Grand Theft Autos come out. We've seen so many other series games that come out. But this has been such a long drought that we haven't seen an NCAA or former NCAA, excuse me, for football like this. And it's definitely really, really exciting. And like I said, I can't wait to get my hands on it. But um, – if it does get over hype and it's not that great of a game, I'm going to be a little bit disappointed, but I don't care at the same time just because we have an updated college football game that we can finally get our hands on to. And it's definitely been a long thing overcoming, and I'm just really, really looking forward to it. And I seriously can't wait to get my hands on it and can't wait. Yeah, I mean, and, and there was even a time too when uh, it was even still exciting uh, whenever I was playing on PC more. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, that was back whenever I actually played video games. But, yeah. uh, you know, I, I, I even had like a, a mod that you could do to Madden to where you could still play as a college team. And they had some of the college players on there and everything. So that was that was a little bit of a fix for me. But this is the real thing. So mm-hmm. please, EA, do not let us down. Do not disappoint please. us. You better make sure that you bring Road to Glory back the way that it was. Yes. And honestly, I don't even know. I mean, I guess you kind of have to add in like NIL and stuff like, hey, you have an, an offer for signing with with nike or something you know or uh you know a local restaurant or, or something like that locals or something yeah so i mean it, it, it's it's going to be interesting to see if they do add stuff like nil or transfer portal uh that'd be kind of cool uh to kind of yeah, right. put yourself in in those shoes like hey i want to hit the transfer portal and see where else i can go and who knows yeah. uh you know i think i think it'd be quite a bit of fun but i'm, I'm very excited for that i think that's something that I Man, I know I've been looking forward to for a long time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to actually upgrade my system because I just, I still have the Xbox One, uh, you know, like one of the Xbox, you know, the, the beginning the, Xbox. One yeah, generation before. behind. So I'm, I'm gonna need the new generation now to catch up. So I even told Katie, I said, hey, by the time this summer hits, I'm gonna need the new generation. So just so you know, I'm probably gonna be dropping, a, you know, a couple hundred bucks on a new system or something. But there you go. <laughs> something else we haven't been able to get to yet, though is Kalen DeBoer going to Alabama. This was really big news. Uh, of course, we talked about Nick Saban retiring. We talked about some guys that we thought. Kalen DeBoer was one of the names we mentioned, but he wasn't really one of the guys that I thought really made a good fit there originally. Um, but as time progressed, now Kalen DeBoer officially signs with Alabama. I watched his press conference to see what he had to say. Uh, I listened to some Alabama fans to kind of hear their thoughts on it. And I've heard a lot of mixed reviews. Um, but Jeremy, how do you feel about Kalen DeBoer going uh, to Alabama? I mean, I, I'm i also one of those mixed review people as well, just because you look at Kalen DeBoer and what he's obviously did for Washington. And don't get me wrong, he led them to a very, very successful road. And he's a good coach. Don't get me wrong about that. But it's one thing to coach a Washington squad the way that you did. Now you're going into a real big animal 
in the SEC and going to fill in the Nick Saban shoes. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be fulfilled right out of the gate, but I mean, at the same time, with how Kalen DeBoer led Washington, maybe there's some hope that he can lead, he can, he can still keep the ball rolling and lead Alabama into the right direction. And they can hopefully, obviously, of course, everyone's main goal is to try and get to the national championship. But in this situation, obviously, now, obviously, having a new head coach and just leading what they can do, it's going to be a really big learning curve for DeBoer and just adjusting to each player's and their strengths and weaknesses and just being able to try and find any pieces of the puzzle that, of course, the Alabama staff, they're going to get them going in the right direction, of course. But still, it's the big thing that I'm kind of concerned about is, is Kalen DeBoer going to control Alabama the Alabama way, or is he going to completely flip-flop Alabama style, and is he going to transform Alabama into the Washington 2.0 per se kind of play? That's that's something I was really concerned about is just, you know, why? Because I, I agree with everything you said. Washington is a much different atmosphere, much different, much different school to coach for. The Pac-12 Absolutely. compared to to the uh, SEC. I do think Kalen DeBoer coached and uh, recruited like a Big Ten coach, and I think yes. that was a perfect ad for Washington moving over to the Big Ten. So that that was amazing. Uh, and so seeing that, I thought that was really cool, uh, to see, you know, Kalen DeBoer at Washington. I loved him at Washington too. I loved what he did there year mm-hmm. one, uh, you know, taking him to, what was it? A 10 win season. I think yep. 11, 11 win 11 with a, with a bowl game. So, yep. and then the, the second year we're taking him to a 14, uh, 14 and 0. Uh, so I mean, or I get, yeah, 14 and one, I guess, uh, yeah. to a national championship though. So, I mean, it's just an absolutely insane two year stint that they went through there. And I think that was a big reason why, you know, seeing Kalen DeBoer, uh, if you if you back up to Kalen DeBoer's, uh, you know, NAIA days, whenever he was coaching uh, up in South Dakota, uh, yeah. So so you know, seeing seeing where he was at back then, uh, this is that's actually a, a league that you and I are, are more familiar with than most. Uh, and so you know, seeing where he was at back then, dating all the way back to then as a head coach, and this is a graphic I posted out on, on social media just to show. This guy may be the real deal, uh, and and the, the more I heard him talk in his press conference and hearing, uh, some some people had very good comments on on what they had to say about him. Other people reacting emotionally, uh, understanding that he's not going to be Nick Saban. He knows he's not going to be Nick Saban. He no. knows there's an atmosphere uh, that that he needs to live up to. Uh, and so here's here's some stats that I want to read off to you guys for Kalen DeBoer for those who aren't super familiar with him, uh, dating back uh, to again his NAIA days. So as a head coach. Here's some stats for you. He's 104 and 12. 104 and 12. That is just, man, that's that's stupid to me. He's played 116 games and only lost 12 of them. Uh, he is, uh, he's had seven, 11, uh, or, or, uh, yeah, seven, 11 win seasons in nine years as a head coach. So in nine years as a head coach, seven of them were 11 or more wins. That's, that's, that's crazy. another crazy, it's a, a, a outstanding stat to have. Now, looking at some of the top coaches he's, he's coached against, Sarkeesian, Dan Lanning, uh, and Lincoln Riley, three very good coaches, Th- three, you know, not the top coaches to, to coach against. Of course, he hasn't coached against Kirby Smart and guys like that, but three top coaches he is seven and O oh against seven and O. Oh. It's crazy. That's that's a very good record to have. Uh, and then, of course, a trip to a national championship in year two at his first Power Five head coaching job. That that is, that is some stats that I think you do have to take into consideration. It makes sense why Alabama got him. I do think when when you look around, I do think he was the best guy for Alabama to bring in. Uh, I, I don't I don't see anyone else that could have been better. Uh, and I also think that he's going to be smart, and he's he even made mention of this going to Nick Saban, re- recognizing that he is the goat, he is the greatest to have ever done this. Uh, and I do think he's he's going to make sure that he 
goes to him for as much advice as Nick Saban will allow. And I think Nick Saban still wants to be a part like that. We see Bob Stoops do the same thing. He was back uh, at, at Oklahoma a lot with Lincoln Riley, and he still showed up to games. Uh, and then whenever Lincoln Riley departed, Bob Stoops stepped in as an interim head coach for the bowl game and helped helped bring in Brent Venables and helped Brent Venables kind of get used to things around there again. And so, uh, you know, I think you're going to see a very similar thing over there with Nick Saban. I think he still wants to be a part of the program. It's just too much for him now. It's it's too much for him to, you know, physically and mentally too much for him. And so personally, I'm, I'm very excited. I do. I do like this Kalen DeBoer transfer over there. Uh, I, I, I hate to see him leave Washington. I do wish him the best. And I even told this to my dad. I hope Kalen DeBoer goes 11 and one next season because he has to go to Norman uh, and he's not going to win <laughs> against my Sooners. So uh, I'm, I'm rooting for Kalen DeBoer. I, I really do hope that he has, has a great career there, honestly. Absolutely. I mean, if, if even if he gets to like nine wins or anything above obviously seven wins, that's definitely a a stellar year just to go into the great as Blake would say, which is true, the greatest conference of all time going into the SEC. This is definitely gonna be something to where if you get, like I said, nine seven plus eight not even seven, eight plus wins on a year as your first season with Alabama. That is definitely something I would not hang my hat on just because you go into that kind of an atmosphere, like I said, and you pull off that kind of an you you pull off that kind of a of a repetition to where you just come from a national championship to being able to back yourself up and say, Hey, I can lead these guys into the right direction. And don't get me wrong, obviously Nick Saban did plenty of that. But I mean See, I'm you, I'm worried for him because what what happens? With Alabama fans, you recognize who you're talking about here. What happens if they go from we're, we're always we're, we're SEC champs, we we make it to the playoffs, uh, and we do this consistently, uh, and then we win we win national championships. That's what they're used to around around there. So I mean, recognize who we're talking about. What happens if he goes in there uh, and they have to experience their first eight eight win season uh, in a very long time? Uh, I think the whole state of Alabama will be in, in <laughs> trouble. But, I mean, he, as long as he doesn't look like Bill Belichick after Tom Brady left, I think I think it'll be okay for – I mean, you, you um, have for, to give him three years. you got to give him credit. Uh, you know, three years to, to feel completely mm-hmm. comfortable. Uh, Absolutely. But it's not like he's walking into Alabama and they're in complete shambles. Blind. So, you know, I, I do think that you have to do something in your first year. And, and I think nine wins is, is kind of like your, your cut, your cutoff. If you get to eight, though, fans are going to be pissed. Uh, yeah, fans are going to be pissed. They're not going to be happy with, with eight wins. So I, mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm, I'm scared for him taking this job because of that, because you can't fill the shoes of the greatest to ever do it. You can't. No. So you, I mean, this is what we said several times. You don't want to be the man to take over for the man. You want to be the man who took over for the guy who took over for the man. You know, so that that's that's really what you want. But hopefully, this turns out well for him. But since he left mm-hmm. Washington, there was a big question mark. Washington's also making a big move. They're going over to the Big Ten, uh, and and it's that's a tough conference to go to as well. Uh, they're the second mm-hmm. best conference, uh, really. If if you you know if you look at it. Very comparable uh, in, in strength when you look at the top the top performers. I do think the SEC is deeper. That's why I would say that is the best conference. And it's if it's been hard for me to admit that, um, but obviously now it's a little easier for me to to admit that now that my Sooners are going to be in the SEC. But yeah, all jokes aside, and being completely serious, I, I think if you're being serious with the situation, it is the best conference from top to bottom. Uh, now, if you if if you were to you know just say. Uh, you know, well, oh yeah, well, our, our top dogs can beat your top dogs. Sure. The, the big 10 can compete with that every once in a while, but anyways, Mm -hmm. Washington going over to the, over to the big 10, they had a big, big, uh, you know, some big shoes to fill in as well. Uh, and so they go down to Arizona and get Jed fish, who was the Arizona head coach this past year, thinking of what Jed fish did. And we've mentioned Arizona. We, we talked about them with their bowl game against Oklahoma and how well they did in that game. We talked about them and how they got to a nine win season. Uh, we got all the way up to a 10 win season after the role game. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, looking at what he was able to do with Arizona, who we were predicting less than seven wins. Let's be honest. 
yeah. he ended up doing very well in that conference and and with a team that really was completely in shambles, a team that didn't have a whole lot of uh, talent to, to be said. Uh, you know, just looking at this, how does Arizona do without Jed Fish? And do you think, uh, I guess, first, let's start off with Washington, him going to, to Washington. Uh, do, you, do you like Jed Fish to Washington? You think that was a pretty good pickup for them? I think that's a good pickup, obviously, like, like you just mentioned, with having them come and like you just said, we didn't think they were going to crack seven wins, to say the least. But, I mean, I think this is definitely a good pickup to go back in the right direction for Washington. Obviously, I know he's no Kalen DeBoer, but he still has tricks up his sleeve like any good coach would. And you look at this kind of pickup for them, it's definitely going to be a good situation for Washington. They'll still be I, I personally think they'll still be in the hunt for a lot of these situations to where they can come up and they can still play bully ball and bully you and think, okay, they got a new head coach. We can we can easily roll these guys just because I know a lot of people think that situation, oh, they just lost what could have been their – there could have been a make or break coach. But now, obviously, like you said, for Jeb Fish, he still has his tricks up his sleeve. And I think he's going to lead Washington into the proper direction. And he's still going to keep the ball rolling. And I think Washington will still be a good team. Like, I'm not saying they're going to be a national championship team this upcoming year. But, I mean, at the end of the day, I I sincerely could be wrong just because look what he just did with Arizona and leading them to a a really positive season. But at Uh, the end of the day. He does walk into a Washington that loses a lot. Of talent. That is true. A lot that of seniors true. that have left, gone on to the NFL. Uh, How that's, many seniors you know, left overall? Do you know off the top of your head? It was a lot. I, 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 know, I don't know off the top of my head. I'd have to look it up. But yeah, I mean, you, you think, uh, you know, guys like McMillan and Roma no, Dunze and, and, and uh, Penix. Michael Penix, Dylan Johnson. And then there were some def- defensive guys that I, I can't remember for sure. But, mm-hmm. you know, ba- basically the entire team is gone. So it's not the same team that you see from last year. They do have Will Rogers stepping in over there, which I feel mm-hmm. bad for him. He goes there to play for Kalen DeBoer and then Kalen DeBoer jumps Kalen ship. DeBoer goes. Uh, yeah. So, man, that's it's it's tough uh, for Washington to, to lose such a great coach and have something going for him. Uh, it rolling into the into the Big Ten, and then all of it just kind of seems like you're very unsure with how it goes. But I do think Jed Fish was a good pickup. Give him by year three, I think he gets Washington back to where they were. Maybe year mm-hmm. two, uh, maybe back mm-hmm. to where they were. Maybe not national championship stage, but right you know, up up there in the Big Ten. And I think they can mm-hmm. compete very well in the Big Ten. So we'll, we'll see. Uh, time will tell. But of course, it's a l- little tricky now for Arizona because now they're going to the Big Twelve. Uh, and so now they they need some somebody to fill in the shoes of Jed Fish, who just did very yeah. good for their their team. So uh, it's, it's going to be tough to uh, for for Arizona to adjust after that now. So it's Definitely. just it's just a, a a domino effect of all of these teams that they lose their coach onto some somewhere new and somewhere better, and now they're left in shambles and they got to do something. So uh, it's yeah. it's interesting to say the least. Uh, college football keeps us on our toes, but. 100%. Let's go over to the NFL, man. Uh, this past weekend, uh, we didn't get to recap anything, and we're not really going to touch up on too much of a recap uh, other than uh, you mentioned the battle of the two Oklahoma quarterbacks and one came out victorious. That was such a bittersweet game for me because I wanted to see Baker do well. I've talked about this all season, how I want this to be his comeback season, and it was. He, he was one of the best quarterbacks in all of the NFL. His team didn't perform the greatest. Uh, they absolutely uh, he, he were gifted by being in a bad division, a terrible division. Uh, and so obviously, yeah, they were they were gifted that, but they've also played well enough, and their defense is good. Uh, and so very happy for Baker, very happy to see him make it uh, to, to the second round of the playoffs. Um, and we'll, we'll get to Baker here in just a second, man. I'm, I'm, I was very, very happy for him and very proud uh, of him and what he's been able, been able to accomplish uh, so far. But let's jump over to the Texans. And Ravens. First off, the Texans, man. C.J. Stroud, that dude is the real, real deal. Uh, I was, I was a little unsure if the Texans could actually pull it off. I thought, man, like the Texans, I just don't know if they they will actually pull it off and make it all the way past uh, the Browns. The Browns have looked very good offensively and defensively going into the, the latter half of the season. So I was just very unsure about them. But I knew that they had the talent to be able to do it. Uh, I, I ultimately picked them to win. It was just a tough one to pick. Um, and so they end up winning. C.J. Stroud had an amazing game. That defense stood up tall. 
the Texans are looking really good, and now they're going to go against arguably arguably the best team in the NFL, Texans, Ravens. Who do you think comes out of this game alive? I'd be lying to you if I said if I wasn't going to pick the Ravens, but that's 100% true just because the Ravens, I think, are going to completely roll. They're going to fly over the Texans, but I mean – for look at what Baltimore and what they've done this entire year, they have completely made teams look silly in my honest opinion. Obviously I've talked about this a lot and I've seen Baltimore play a good amount just because I'm a Cincinnati fan and we're obviously in the same division, but you got to find a way to keep Lamar Jackson in the pocket and not let him roll out just because you see a quarterback like Lamar Jackson, he's if he sees an open hole and everybody's covered, he's going to use his legs. He's not going to he's not going to fiddle around and throw it away. Lamar Jackson is definitely one of those running style quarterbacks who obviously has a great arm as well. But if you sincerely find a way to stop Lamar Jackson and just do that and just keep everybody covered. Obviously, you're going to have to watch for Odell Beckham Jr. on the outside. Then you got so many other weapons. How, how about so- – uh- What's his first name? Lively, the tight end. Uh, oh, how about, yeah. how about him stepping in for Mark Andrews, man? That's what uh, I was and just then Zay, say. Zay Flowers stepping Zay in Flowers. as a as a rookie, and then there was mm-hmm. a lot of question marks in the backfield, and it just seems like they couldn't find their guy for their running back. Mm-hmm. And Gus Edwards steps in at in, in key moments, and he's he's a great running back. I, he really is. And so, yeah, I mean, the, the Ravens are a tough team. I'm I'm right there with you. I'm I'm picking the Ravens to win this game. Although I'm, I, I'll be rooting for the Texans. I, I think it's really 100%. fun to see where they've come from uh last year they only won maybe two games one or two, two games, games maybe but, yeah and yeah. so so i mean they, they didn't win anything yeah and you know and so coming from complete shambles nothing nothing to that team uh, the, one of the worst teams last year if not the worst team i'd say possibly the colts only only team in the running for worst team above them I don't know, maybe the year. Bears, but I don't know yeah the bears were up there i think the bears would have been a little better last year uh, than them uh, yeah. You know, at least I feel like the Bears had something to work with, where the Texans just didn't even look like they had anything to work with. Demico Ryan's comes in, leads them to a ten-win season, to the playoffs, upsets the cow, or uh, sorry, upsets the Browns uh, in in that game. Uh, just an, an amazing, amazing performance, uh, an amazing season from Demico Ryan's, pulling in C.J. Stroud, who had an amazing season after the the Panthers passing up on him. Uh, Best decision the Panthers could have ever made for the for the for the Houston Texans. Uh, so you know, pulling in C.J. Stroud, seeing what he's been able to do, guys like Nico, uh, you know, Nico out there doing his thing, and then they've got uh, Dell doing his thing, and uh, you know, just just everything, everything that they've been able to put together over, and then picking up Will Anderson, another big time young guy on on that defensive side now, and it's just looking at everything that's that's happened for the Texans this year. I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm, I will be pulling for them. But the Ravens just look like the best team in the NFL, and I just don't know how you're going to beat beat the flock mm-hmm. in their home stadium. So they're going to have home field advantage. It's going to be outside. It's not going to be in your nice cushy dome. So how are you going to be able to play in that? So I do think the Ravens probably win this game, uh, and I don't have the spreads pulled up uh, in, in front of me or anything like that. Um, but maybe maybe we can maybe we can cover these games a little more in depth. We're just going to do a quick preview tonight. Maybe we can do this um, Saturday morning since we weren't able to get a Tuesday episode out for you guys. So make sure to tune in. But uh, jumping over to the Packers, another team. Very happy to see the Packers. Uh, and I've I got a little story I'll, I'll tell about that, them in, a, in just a second. But you know, them being able to upset the Cowboys, I called it. Uh, we, we talked about this on, on the Belly Up After Dark. Uh, you know, I, I, I just I don't see the Cowboys succeeding in the playoffs. They're just this team. We dumb boys, and then we them floppers. As that's that's really what we saw. You know, and uh, you know if if uh, you know I saw a meme, I thought it was pretty funny. If I ever send a picture of Dak Prescott, just know that this means that I'm I'm not going to show up. <laughs> <laughs> So I mean, just the dude. Uh, so I, I actually had a, a parlay in uh, that I put together, and I had one of the picks on there was that Dak Prescott to throw an interception. Uh, and sure enough, he had two, uh, threw some pick sixes in there. Lovely game. I loved to see it. I loved to see the Cowboys go down. Uh, I hated seeing CD and him just so out of sync. Uh, I felt like CD couldn't catch like six passes. Not all of them were completely his fault, but there was quite a few that were his fault as well. So mm-hmm. kind of split blame there. But anyways, going over to the Packers 49ers, uh, 49ers 
another team that's argu- arguably the best team in the NFL right up there, top two. Uh, there's really no question about it. Uh, Niners and Ravens are absolutely the top dogs, the the favorites to make it to the Super Bowl. Do you think the Packers have a little bit of a chance to upset the 49ers? It's a slight chance. I'll say that. So you're and I mean, there's a chance. There's a, there's hope. There's a hope for a lot of things. But before I get on to that, it's funny that you talk about the Dallas Cowboys. I want to say two things here before I go back. I just got a notification from NFL that this just just in that Cowboys will retain Mike McCarthy as head coach for the 2024 season. Now, um, so they did fire. Even, that's that's I guess yeah. good news. I, I don't I don't think firing him is the answer. I think uh, figuring out a way to push Jerry Jones out of the office is is the right <laughs> move. <laughs> no kidding. Have Jerry Jones just chill at home. But yeah. the other thing I, I have to say, just for a lot of people, how about them Cowboys, everybody? But um, no, going back to the Packers, 49ers, the Packers and 49ers, this is definitely going to be, a, I think it's going to be actually a better game than what a lot of people think. Obviously, I know with with Love and Brock Purdy, then this is definitely going to be one to where you have to keep an eye on for um, both quarterbacks because they both have a great arm, and that's obviously what we just saw Jordan Love do with um, against the against the Cowgirls. I mean, this is definitely something that is going to be, I think, fun. Obviously, Brock Purdy will be slinging the ball around. Obviously, watch out for Debo and let CMC do his thing. And we're we're obviously going to see a touchdown from CMC. I can guarantee you that. I, I would and, I would think so. If I, if I'm building a, if I'm going to build a parlay on Saturday, uh, you know, to for for the, for the weekend. Parlay for the weekend cmc is going to touch down you know anytime touchdown is going to be in there um but we, we won't we won't go too far into depth with them because i think i just kind of uh created that on on the spot that we'll, we'll maybe we'll go a little further into depth on these games mm-hmm. um but uh yeah go ahead finish no um like just looking at this game is this is definitely going to be a defensive battle just because like yeah. i said we're having both of these quarterbacks being able to swing the ball around your secondary has to be on point for this kind of a game just because one small little wrong read and you can be easily looking them seeing in the, seeing them in the back of the end zone for a touchdown so secondary has definitely going to be strong your middle linebackers definitely to be communicating and if you're going to blitz you got to make it count because if you get that wrong opportunity you know where he's probably going to throw yeah well and if i'm if i'm being realistic on this situation the niners are going to win but yes. uh, i was talking with a couple of my, my co-workers so three other co-workers we had four of us there uh we were just talking about football and some somebody came up with the idea hey Who's gonna win the Who's gonna win the Super Bowl as an underdog? You know, like who, who's an underdog that could win it? We were talking about it. You know the three the three big underdogs. If you were to put money on them, uh, plus three thousand, I think for the Packers to win it, uh, plus thirty three hundred for the Texans and the Buccaneers. I said, yeah, I mean, I, I'm really rooting for the Buccaneers. Uh, obviously, I'm gonna root for for Baker all the way, um, yeah. but I don't think they're gonna win it. Uh, I just don't know if they're a complete team enough to 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 win it. I do think the Eagles just had a down. Uh, you know, a downhill down spiral th- through the end of their season. So I don't think that really showed that the Buccaneers were as good as they are. Um, mm-hmm. You know, ultimately, if you look at the broken tackles, or, you know, just the missed tackles, no, uh, that's horrible. that's really what what won it for the Buccaneers. So I don't think the Buccaneers are going to win it. I said I don't. I just don't know if the Texans are good enough to make it past the Ravens. Uh, and then we were talking. I was like, but if you're talking those th- those out of those three, I'd say the Packers because the Packers, if they're able to beat the Niners, I think I think they can go all the way. Uh, you know, if, if you can beat the Niners, I think you've got the rest to make it there. Uh, and, what do you, you think you about can, Detroit, though? I, I think Detroit is is, is obviously the, the the next favorite. Okay. In the yeah, NFC, yeah. but yeah, out of the out of those three underdogs, I, w- I would say the Packers. So we yeah. all put twenty five bucks I'll in. Give it that. We all put twenty five bucks in. Why not? Let's let's put some on this. And so we just just out of fun, uh, just you know, a, a pure. Hey, let's Friendly. let's have a little a little bit of excitement. So I I am the biggest cheese head in the world right now because obviously if, if we can win that one, uh, then we're we're definitely going to try to definitely going to try to pull that that, that cheddar in. Um, you but go. you know it's it's it's, it's it, I do think the Packers have a slight chance. But if they if they beat the 49ers, I'm I'm all on board. I think the Packers have the best chance to to win because the 49ers are an incredibly tough team. But we'll talk yeah. more about that game. Uh, like I said, maybe on Saturday morning we can hop on and try to do a, a live show. So make sure to tune in Saturday morning at 8.30 uh, if we do decide to do that. So uh, tune in anyways just in case we do. But going over to the Bucks lions obviously I'm rooting for Baker. I do think the Buccaneers' defense is strong enough 
to slow down that Lions offense. But I don't know if the if the you know the, the the Buccaneers offense just isn't rolling the way that they could. Uh, and I, I think uh, I'm drawing a blank now on their offensive coordinator. So uh, personally, I think I think the Buccaneers. I'm going to be rooting for them. Obviously, it's going to be uh, you know Britton and I button heads over that one. <laughs> That's I'm sure. Be fun. Um, but I, I'm I'm rooting for the Buccaneers. I hope they do win it. I just don't see it happening. Uh, and and obviously, I'm going to go with the favorite in this this one. I think the Lions win. <laughs> That's my thing. It, it's one thing because this is definitely going to be one of those exciting games between two quarterbacks that you look at both of these quarterbacks and you think for what they <laughs> couldn't get I, it I out. I got one coming, but it's just not, not going to come out. I mean, you look at both of these quarterbacks and what they definitely had to go through. Obviously, let's start out with Baker Mayfield here. There was a lot of people seeing, seeing what Baker Mayfield did was starting at the beginning of his NFL career. There was a lot of hype that Baker Mayfield was going to go far than the first couple of years. Baker Mayfield, I'm not going to lie, it wasn't his best performance as the first couple of years. Take it for granted, I'm I'm saying that also looking, not trying to sound biased or anything. It just, I don't think personally where he landed had anything to help with putting fuel on the fire. But now you look at Baker Mayfield now, He's got the ball rolling, and Baker Mayfield, what he just did against the Philadelphia Philadelphia Eagles, I mean, you said it the best, then I was going to mention that too. The only the big thing that killed Philadelphia was not being able to rack up and make those full tackles. They just, were just literally – Yeah, go ahead, finish. No, they were literally just bouncing off them like, like a rock on a trampoline, and they wouldn't even wrap up, and it was – I literally said that so many times on the TV. What are you doing? Just one thing for everyone out there. I love Baker Mayfield. I am I am possibly one of the biggest Baker Mayfield fans on the planet. Uh, I've I've loved him. I, I actually it's a funny story. I I started off I did not like Baker one bit when he came into Oklahoma. Didn't like him. I totally I've, I've said this on air. I totally understand people not liking uh, Baker Mayfield. But about three games into the season, I realized his his un, unorthodox way to quarterback is just his style. Uh, and mm-hmm. so then I I quickly learned to love Baker Mayfield. Absolutely love the guy. I will back him up uh, till the day he is out of the league. Um, but can we stop? Stop comparing him to Tom Brady. He is not Tom Brady. He will never be Tom Brady. No matter no matter how good he ever does in the NFL, he's never going to live up to Tom Brady. Yeah. So I understand the comparisons. I think it's more or less, hey, look, there's only been two guys to do it in the in the buck for the Buccaneers franchise. Uh, and these are the only two quarterbacks. I understand some of the uh, some, some of the stats that have been thrown out there, but then some people are trying to compare him. There is no comparison, so stop it. Nothing. Coming from one of the biggest Baker Mayfield fans on the planet, there is no comparisons. So please stop the comparisons uh, to Tom Check Brady. The ring count too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but no, I, I was I was just doing the math, trying to think too. Baker Mayfield has been had been in the league for six years, and I think he's had eight different head coaches. Eight different coaches that he's had to deal with. That's, crazy. That's tough to do. Uh, so yeah. you know, I, I think he. I don't think he gets enough credit for that. The fact that he's trying to adjust to a new system after new system after new system, uh, yeah. and you know, in Cleveland, I think there was several several years where you just saw, you know, where where they they couldn't figure out what kind of blocking schemes they were going to do at the offensive line and stuff mm-hmm. like that. That it it was very obvious um, yeah. from from you know if if you actually paid attention to the game. Uh, did he play his best ever in, in the in the league? No, I don't think he ever did. I think his rookie season, he started off hot, uh, one of the one of the best rookies to come in uh, and and do it. And so you know, obviously breaking some rookie records, went downhill from there. Sure, uh, still um, since 1995, the you know the Buccaneers have won one playoff game, or uh, sorry, the Browns have won one playoff game, and Baker Mayfield has won two. Well, that one with the Browns was with Baker Mayfield. Yeah. So you know, just just putting that out there. Uh, I, I don't think Baker Mayfield was the problem in in, in Cleveland. I think that's very mm-hmm. obvious. I think that's apparent now. Right. Um, so just looking at, it, I, I I think Baker is still a good quarterback, and I think he's proven that. And so uh, it's 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 pretty obvious that I think he's going to get an, an extension offer to come back with the Buccaneers, and I'm sure he's more than glad to do it, uh, especially if everything stays the same there as far as coaching staff and certain guys get to stay around him and stuff. Um, but let's, let's jump over to another one. Another, oh man, this, this is probably my favorite game of the weekend. When I look at it, uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun to watch the Bucks lines. I think that's going to be one of my favorite games to watch. Mm-hmm. 
just from the pure aspect of being a Baker fan. Uh, and then I think the Lions have a cool story too. Um, but when you take a look at the best two teams uh, this weekend, Chiefs Bills, this is this is you could you could boil this down and say this is the AFC Championship game, really, um, because it's two teams that would have a, a very good shot of winning the AFC. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, the Chiefs are just that team that no matter how bad they look, they're going to win. Uh, and throughout the season, they won enough to make it to the playoffs and they won enough uh, to make it this far to the divisional round. So mm-hmm. now we've got them going to Buffalo. That's one big thing for Buffalo that I think plays out in their favor, where you've seen in, in a couple of uh, a couple of seasons past when they have to play the Chiefs in the playoffs and they that don't era. get that home field advantage. So... This would be the year if they were going to do it. Do you think the Chiefs' defense is tough enough, though, to slow down, uh, you know, Josh Allen and their their offense and to be able to make a stand and, and move past this game? I sincerely do. I mean, I've said this once and I've said it before. You got to do whatever it takes to stop that Kansas City defense and Chris Jones. If you can't stop Chris Jones, it's, it's definitely going to be a hurt. And I can't remember the other – um, the other defensive one that you always hear, I think he's number 56 or um, uh, I know he's always another powerhouse too for the Kansas city defense. But I mean, you also look at what Kansas city's secondary has been able to do. The whole team itself is, is fast and they're strong. They definitely have their, they definitely have their a game, obviously what it seems like every game, but like you also did bring up a valid point, Josh, not every game. Kansas City looks like a five-star team. You'll see them some games looking like a four-star, even sometimes a three-star if they're really if they're really having that heck of a day. To me, the only time I really seen uh, Kansas City look like a three-star team is when they played the the Raiders when they had the the really bad game. But I mean, looking outside of that, I mean, if the Kansas City defense gets all the pressure that they physically can on Josh Allen. And their defense can also keep Stephon Diggs um, under control and just um, even like um, Knox for the Buffalo Bills. He's definitely been. Gabe Davis, another dude. Yeah, Gabe uh, Davis. And then, of course, man. they've got. Um, uh, why am I drawing a blank on his name now? Uh, the running back that they, they have there, number four. Um, Dalvin Cook. Uh, it's not no, Dalvin Cook. It's, no, it's his brother. Um, it's his brother, James um, Cook. James, James Cook. Cook. Yeah, there you go. Uh, they, they, yeah, they've got it's it's Dalvin Cook's brother. Uh, but yeah, uh, you know, so really cool story for him too. Uh, obvi- obviously, working his way as a starter there in Buffalo. But yeah, I think I think Buffalo is finally tough enough to win. Um, but I just believe in the curse too much, where I just don't know if they're going to be able to get it done. Uh, and mm-hmm. I do want to back up. Uh, and and I, I should if if I would have thought about this uh, beforehand, I would have pulled up the clip uh, so we could so we could watch it. But Josh Allen, one hundred percent faked a slide and got away with oh, it. Oh, I know what you're talking 100%. about. 100%. I, I, don't, I don't like that at all. I, 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 I truly think that he faked a slide because you, you've made it very tough for the defenders um, because you're not allowed to hit him if he's if he's sliding. And so you see the yeah. defenders stop and break off. He it, They act like uh, Josh Allen just had this huge run and nobody nobody could stop him. No, they, they hurried up and stopped because they didn't want to hit him because he was in the middle of he was He was ducking his entire body back like he was going to slide. And then he mm-hmm. decided, oh, I've got a little bit of room. I can I can work forward because Josh Allen doesn't slide. So I do think he got away with one there. But um, I, I'm I'm not ever going to put money against the Chiefs. I'm, I'm not. Uh, and so I I think Buffalo has the team this year because the Chiefs are not as good. I think they have the team to to win this game. But I just think the Chiefs are going to find a way to to win this game. Uh, that's just who they are. Uh, and it so might I'm, be a little T Swift magic. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, plus I'm, I don't know. I'm, I think I'm. I think I'm turning into more and more of a Swifty. Um, because oh I, my gosh! So, so, hear me out. Everyone wants to hate on her because they're showing the cameras on her. She's not. Mm-hmm. She's not saying, "Hey, look at me." I, I, she's not. And so I, I, I guess I'm. I'm more or less not really a Swifty, but I'm going to defend her in saying she's not asking to be on TV. She, she mm-hmm. found a, a lover uh, and she's having a she's in a good relationship with him and she wants to come and support him and his team and guess what I, I've seen some of the, the celebrations that she's doing and high fiving the fans and the people up there and cheering regardless of whether it's Travis or not she's she's being a good Kansas City fan uh, and so I, I will I will back her up in that much um, true. but 
Let's go ahead and move on. I do want to talk about UFC 297, and we've got plenty to talk about when it comes to that because, like I said, I'm very excited for these fights this weekend. I was watching uh, all kinds of, of, of replays and stuff, getting caught up on on some of these fighters last night uh, and just looking at, at some of the, the fights that are going to happen. A, a card full of really fun ones, I think. Uh, and so you're not going to want to miss it. But before we get any further, we want to mention our sponsor for this episode, and that is Factor. Because guys, it is the new year uh, and you want to get started on your new year's resolutions. Uh, and so what better way to do that than with factor? So that, that way you're ready for this new year. Factor's ready to eat meal delivery service takes the stress out of meal planning and sets you up for success this new year. Skip the grocery stores, prep work, and f- cooking fatigue. Instead, get chef-crafted, dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door with over 35 meals to choose from per week, including options like keto, calorie smart, vegan plus veggie, and more, plus over 55 weekly add-ons. You'll have a ton of nutritious flavors uh, and, and, and all kinds of options to kickstart your resolutions. Uh, and guys, guess what? Another amazing thing about factor is that when things get hect- really hectic and stuff, and you're, you're not really sure, uh, if, if you're going to be home to be, be able to get to those meals and actually cook them, uh, you don't know if, uh, you really need them for this upcoming week because you have other plans. Maybe you're planning a party and so you don't need them for uh, a couple of days. Maybe you don't need it this next week at all. They make it very easy because you can change your order up every week with plans from four to 18 wheel, m- meals per week. Or you can even pause and reschedule your delivery times anytime. Factor makes it very easy. Uh, So you can stress less over meal times in this new year. Uh, Factor's no prep, no mess meals free free up all kinds of time. Otherwise spent shopping and cooking and cleaning up. No more wasting time this new year in the kitchen. Guys, we absolutely love Factor. I've mentioned this several times. I've used Factor in the past, loved their services. Uh, Now we use them even more because they're a sponsor of the show and I still absolutely love Factor. Their delivery, their meal delivery service, um, Factor is absolutely the one of the best ways to free up all of your time. I love their meals; they taste delicious. Uh, one of my favorites now that I've I found out is I absolutely love their smoothies and their protein shakes. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Go try them out. Factor is an amazing service. Uh, you can go to factormeals.com slash rising250 and use that code rising250 to get 50% off. Uh, that's R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O-5-0. And you heard that right. That is 50% off by using code R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O-5-0 at checkout. Uh, so go over the head and head over there to factormeals.com slash rising250. Use that code rising250 and get 50% off an amazing delivery service. You do not want to miss out on this, guys. Go check them out. Again, factormeals.com slash rising250. Let's go ahead and get back to the action. Talk about all of this, all of these UFC fights coming up. We're going to talk about the top two ones, uh, the t- top two fights to get into. Uh, and talk about these because I think there's a lot to get into when you just talk about these two fights. Um, Jeremy, I, I'm not sure how much you've been able to go back and, and kind of take a look at these fights coming up. Uh, and, and kind of study them and see what's going on. Uh, I, I I used to wrestle. Uh, I, I was really big in wrestling, uh, and and I did really well in it. Uh, I tried I tried getting into MMA a little bit. Realized maybe it's not a smart thing for me to do because it's it's dangerous. Um, but yeah. I, I still loved it, and I do. I still do love it. Uh, and if I could find a gym around here to do it, I'd, I'd probably still go and, and just have fun sparring. And fun, you know, it, it's 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 a sport that until you've done it. It's hard to understand what the enjoyment is with watching two guys or, or two ladies go in there and just beat the crap out of each other. Um, but it's a very fun sport, a very underrated sport too. But UFC 297 brings us a very fun one. Uh, we're going to start off over the, over in the women's bantamweight title between Raquel Pennington and By- Myra B- Bueno Silva, two fighters that, man, these these women are extremely tough. Uh, starting off with, with Myra B- Bueno Silva, uh, she came in and, and won as an underdog, won the bantamweight uh, title, uh, and she's she's a fighter. She is she is very tough. Very, uh, I mean she's she's one of those she's one of those ladies that she's got for a lady uh, and for being in, in that that weight class and for being where she's at. She has got heavy hands, and I think any woman to want to go and fight her, whether it be to to steal this belt or not, is absolutely crazy. But Raquel Pennington, big time underdog in this fight. She is so much fun to watch. 
she is a fighter and she is not a quitter. Uh, she will fight till the very end. I've seen her fight through injuries. I've seen her fight through some, some, you know, some, uh, you know, gashes on her face that just, you should probably be throwing in the towel for Raquel Pennington, <laughs> super tough fighter. I really love Raquel, Raquel Pennington. I'm rooting for her a little bit just because I love seeing what she's able to do and her being a, a, an underdog. Uh, it'd be really fun to see that uh, shift a little bit. Although Myra Bueno Silva, very tough fighter, like I said. Uh, so it's going to be a really fun match. Uh, if you have to pick between these two, who are you picking? <sighs> you going to go with the, with the reigning champ or are you going to go with the underdog with the contender? Man, this is a good fight just because, like, it really, I've, I've I've had the opportunity to go back and watch a little bit of clips between both fighters, and I, literally, you said it the best. Their hands are unbelievable. It literally looks like they're punching with bricks out on their hands. But I mean, if I had to give you an honest pick. I'd probably, I'd honestly go with Myra in this situation just because, like you said it the best, she she battles through so much injury and her um, her stability and stamina, time management and everything that you see these fighters put into put into these fights. You see a lot of fighters that they'll go ahead and throw uh, throw all the gas in the tank right out of the first round. Then the next couple of rounds, it just looks like they're just hugging each other and just doing whatever they can just to burn through the clock. But, but to me, both of these fighters, you, you will get all these rounds and they will put everything out there. And obviously, str- obviously the strategic part for both of these fighters, they're both really, really good boxers and they're not afraid to throw, throw jabs, throw, throw monster hooks, and they'll just do whatever they can to get you to stun. But if, if I had to pick an honest if I had to pick a guess right now, I'm going with Myra just because, like you said, she was considered the underdog in the situation. Who cares if you're an underdog? Anything's possible in these yeah, circumstances. Yeah, she, she was. She was previously. Now, now she's yeah, not. True. But yeah, now I, I, I get what yeah, you're saying. But, yeah, I mean, you you can say all you want about being an underdog, and now look at you now. Now you're a champion, and I think now that she has the championship, I think she's just going to keep. I think she's going to keep that ball rolling and it's definitely going to be a, it's definitely going to be a monument. I should say monumental, but it's definitely going to be a, a tough fight for both of these ladies. And I, if you ask me to step in the ring, I will step in the ring and be the water boy. That's about it. I would not throw hands. That's to say the least, Josh. No. And that's, that's what's It's crazy to see these two, you know, uh, you know, I, sometimes I think the the women fights are so much more fun to watch because I think there is m- much less of a gap mm-hmm. from top to bottom in, in the women's fighting. And so I, I do think in some some sense or some fights, um, some fights are, are kind of an outlier. They're not quite the same. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. in, in most fights for for the women fights, I think that there's so much more, uh, so much less of a gap between the two fighters. And this is yeah. absolutely one of them where I think it's it's a lot of fun to go and look at these two fighters seeing between Mikkel and, uh, or sorry, Ra- Raquel, uh, Pennington and Myra, uh, uh, you know, so I just, I, I, I'm, I'm right there with you. I think that's a smart, a smart choice. I'm, I'm rooting for Raquel Pennington. I am. Um, but if I, if I had to put my money on it, uh, I'm probably s- sticking with Myra Bueno Silva. I yeah. think, uh, I think Silva ends up winning this fight. I think she is, she's, she's holding on to that, that title. I don't think she wants to let go, but no. this, this may be one that you end up seeing go five rounds, because neither neither one of them are going to give up. Neither one of them no. are going to quit. But no. let's jump to the the main event, the one that I'm I'm very excited for. Um, watching Sean Strickland. So you've got Sean Strickland, uh, and Drakus Duplessis. Uh, these two fighters, both big dudes for middleweights. Yes. They are very big. Um, both of them. Some of, some of the biggest. You know, I'm I'm talking bulky. Some of the the bulkiest middleweights you'll see out there. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and these two dudes are, are both very tough starting off with Sean Strickland. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I think Sean Strickland seeing his journey, um, if, if you back up, so he got to fight against uh, Israel Adesanya, he went to Australia to fight him. Uh, so I think that's, that's something for, for him to be, be able to go to Australia, go, uh, go and, and fight him for the title. And that was because Drake S. Duplessis had a, had an ankle injury, had a foot, a foot injury. Uh, mm-hmm. and so he wasn't able to fight in that match. So 
Strickland goes and he goes to fight against Israel Adesanya. Anyone who's seen Izzy, Izzy fight, he is one of the toughest dudes because he sits there. He does this thing where he, he throws these faint punches and faint kicks here and there and gets you thinking and you're trying to defend yourself to where all of a sudden you're looking at the wrong direction and you're flinching over the wrong thing and he opens you up and finds somewhere to get you. Uh, he, he gets you on the ground. He, he can fight you in the air. It doesn't matter. He's so well trained in every facet of the game. That's why he was a champion for so long. And so for Strickland to come in here uh, and be, to be able to fight uh, Israel Adesanya the way that he fought him, uh, he, he showed how great his defense is. Uh, because Sean Strickland is more known for just being that guy that he doesn't care that he gets hit. He's just going to come in there, heavy heavy fists, heavy gloves, swinging as mm -hmm. hard as he can and try to knock you out. And he is a fighter. He's been fighting since he's like 16, 17 years old. He's, he's been in, in several different leagues growing up to this point. Uh, and so, you know, he, he is a fighter at heart. He's a fighter in the blood. Uh, and so he has he has the best defense I think I have ever seen, especially against Adesanya, where he he rarely allowed Adesanya to actually get into position. He owned the he owned the octagon uh, and the positioning in the octagon just about every every bit. Uh, and then uh, you also saw his defense. He wasn't allowing Izzy to to land anything on him. And so I think Sean Strickland, being that great at defense, uh, it's 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 tough to root against this guy. Um, and, but his his personality is one that I don't care for so much. His personality yeah. is very hard to root for. If I'm taking yeah. personality in the in the fighters that I like, I like I like Dracus Duplessis so much more when I'm taking personalities. But Sean Strickland is a tough fighter. His jabs feel like many people's haymakers. Uh, <laughs> he's he's got he's got jabs that are just so hard, so fast um, that I, I think you know it's those those jabs will wear you down. And he he can come in with a heavy hand. Uh, and, and he wants to get in your face. Uh, he wants he wants to put, get you backed up. Uh, so when he throws a, a, a haymaker, you're going to feel it yesterday. That's how hard it is. Uh, so he's a tough dude. I think he's he's that's one thing looking at him. Now, looking over at Dracus Duplessis, uh, if you back up, uh, there was there was a fight against Darren Hill. And this is this is one of them that I just I, I, I don't have a whole lot of just wow factor. From Dracus Duplessis, I think he. I mean, he obviously finishes fights. He obviously wins fights, but right. he's, he hasn't gone against as tough of, of talent as we've seen from Sean Strickland. I think Sean Strickland has performed better against the talent, uh, you know, and I think he's gone against better opponents, especially mm -hmm. when you talk about Israel Adesanya and the way that he was able to, to win that that match. So, you know, I, I think when when you look back at Dracus Duplessis and when he fought against Darren Till, if you go back and rewatch that fight, something that I, I saw was early in that fight, he knocks him back and he, he starts wailing him on the cage and he couldn't end it. He couldn't end it when he got him in that position. That's something that I think if you you put Sean Strickland in that position, he's ending that fight right yeah. there and then, right then and there. Uh, I don't think there's any question in it. Uh, and so that's that's one thing. And I, I don't think Dracus Duplessis really deserved a title shot at Israel Adesanya. Now, looking at it right now, I still don't understand where he really deserves the shot at Sean Strickland. I suppose because you're saying, well, you haven't seen him against good enough good enough uh, opponents. Challenge here's here's point. the fight. Uh, so th another one was against Robert Whitaker. I do think that was a better fight for him, uh, for Dracus Duplessis. Um, but again, I just didn't have that wow factor from him. Uh, he, 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 he allows guys to get back into the fight after... After nailing him fast, nailing him hard, uh, you know, and, and and hitting him hard and hard and fast, getting him uh, in, into a bad predicament. But the thing with these two fighters, the thing that I think is so exciting about this fight is that they both fight very similar styles. They both have heavy hands. They both like to own the position in the octagon. They both like to push you up up against your back. And so it's going to be interesting to see which one actually is able to back up the other one, um, because I think you're going to see both of them come in there and try to push each other back in the middle and you're going to see heavy hands going at it. Now where Drake is Duplessis does win this, this battle is he is very good with any kind of chokes, any kind of, any kind of hold, hold that he can get you in any kind of, uh, you know, mm -hmm. headlock or anything like that, that he can get you in. You're not slipping out of it. No. Uh, he's, he's very good at getting his, his hands and his arms around, uh, where he has to, his, 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 his legs, he's got very good positioning when it comes to, to the ground game, any kind of grappling. So I don't think St Sean Strickland wants to grapple with him at all. I think Sean Strickland wants to keep his reach, uh, on Dracus Duplessis. Uh, so that's one thing I, I see with this, but I think what, what you're going to see in this fight, my prediction for this fight is I think you're going to see Dracus Duplessis go in there, try to go fast and try to go hard uh, and, and, and try to 
do something quick in, in, in the first round. I think he gets worn down um, because he doesn't have very good stamina. Where you look at Sean Strickland, Sean Strickland has phenomenal stamina. He's going to last these five rounds and not be winded one bit by the end of fifth round. Uh, so if it, if it has to go the distance, Sean Strickland has this. I don't think it goes the distance. I don't think it. I think it, en- it gets ended in the second or third round. I think Sean Strickland wins this. I think Strickland knocks him n- knocks him out. Uh, you know, in the I- I'll, I'll call it. I think second round. I could see this going into a third round, just because you got two very tough dudes. But I think Sean mm-hmm. Strickland. Uh, you know, he he gets maybe a TKO. Uh, I'll call it that much. But I think a TKO in the second or third round. Um, yeah. But I've I've had enough talking on this one, uh, and, <laughs> and I'm sure I've, I stole just about all the talking points there for you. But. Uh, go ahead with your prediction here in this in this fight between Sean Strickland and Drakus Duplessis. Do you feel like an MMA fighter with saving all your stamina for that topic? I mean, I'm I'm worn out just thinking about this fight. <laughs> yeah, me too. But I mean, looking at Sean Strickland and Duplessis, my big thing is I'm I'm a room for I'm room for Sean Strickland as well. But here's the thing that I really wa- I would watch out for if I was Sean Strickland. I understand you're able to take a lot of jabs and you're able to take a lot of punches. But my thing is if you get one of those off guard punches, like you mentioned where you throw a fake and then you get them right on the chin or right on the jaw and you're going to be stunned and you're going to be going down against arguably a really top contender for, for submissions. Like you always just mentioned, Josh, this is definitely going to be one of those moments to where your mind game is definitely going to be one of the dominant things for you. And also, like you said it the best, stamina for both of these fighters, they're both going to be they're both going to be throwing everything they got and they'll act like they've only been doing it for 20 seconds. But if I had to call this fight, I'm going the middle of the third round. Strickland wins by a TKO as well. I th- I sincerely think it's going to be a good fight, obviously, like it's going to be the main card. But for this kind of fight, I, Dupl- if you get Duplessis into submission modes against Strickland, you're in trouble. You might as well just go ahead and get a tap out because obviously we've seen those um, triangle chokes and we've seen plenty of arm bars and we've seen so much different. I mean, he's he's really good at getting that headlock oh, sunk in. It's crazy from, from, from any position. Is. From any position, from even from standing up, I've seen him get that headlock, just locked Absolutely. in and drop you. Yeah. Uh, and so, I mean, he's 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 a phenomenal uh, finisher. Mm-hmm. I just don't know if he he stands. I, I, I'm I'm just not seeing the it factor from him that I see from Sean Strickland. I think Sean Strickland deserved that fight against Izzy more than Drakus Duplessis. Uh, and so, you know, and I, I kind of like the the little banter that we we saw from uh, Strickland said yeah. something about, uh, you know. Drakus couldn't couldn't even go and fight Izzy because he was too busy icing his icing his foot, uh, yes. you know. Just uh, you know, oh, he he couldn't he couldn't handle a foot injury. I, I kind of like that's that's one like thing. Uh, is, yeah, I, I like the the chatter back and forth, but uh, you know, I don't think it's going to be like the Edwards Covington fight that we watched a little while ago. Um, yeah. What was that? Two ni- was that two ninety six? Yeah. Um, so you know, I, I don't I don't think it's going to be like that fight where you see both fighters just feel each other out the entire time. It felt like. And it was a very, really boring fight because Colby Covington was there. So, so Colby Covington is the one that has to do something. Mm -hmm. Leon Edwards knows that all he has to do is just stand up the entire fight and not let him land a big hit. That's all he really has to do to to defend. He's defending. So he's going to play in defense mode. Colby has to come out and do something and he never did. It's not going to be like that. Uh, I think this one's going to be Drakus Duplessis knows that he is the one that is is con- is the contender. He's the one that's trying to steal the belt from, uh, you know, from Sean Strickland. So I think he's going to come out very very fast. I think it's going to be two guys running at each other from the get go, and and there's not going to be a whole lot of feeling out. There might be a little bit in the beginning, maybe a slow, you know, slow kind of like let me feel you out for a minute, and then you're just going to see it go at it. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I don't I don't think this is going to be the same fight that we saw, uh, you know, maybe a month ago. This will be so, a better fight. Yeah, it's going to be very, very exciting. Uh, I, th- I think looking at the undercards too, some of the the, the you know, prelims and stuff like that, uh, they, they all they all look like they could be some good fights from some fighters that you might see stepping up into bigger stages too. So it's yeah. going to be a fun fight night uh, this upcoming Saturday. So make sure to tune in for UFC 297. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Um, you can also make sure to tune in over on the Belly Up Sports YouTube page. Uh, you can check us out over there. Uh, we should be doing a Belly Up After Dark. I know Jared and I will be doing that next Thursday. 
Uh, so make sure to check us out over there next Thursday. Um, and you know, it's going to be on the second and, uh, so let's see, we said second and fourth Thursday of every month. So you can check out, uh, Jared and I are always going to be on there hosting. Uh, we'll have yeah. different per- belly up personalities on there as well. So just another place to tune in, uh, for all of your sports. But of course, as always, if you're watching on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button. If you haven't already hit that like button and comment down below. That's some great ways to help us beat the algorithm and keep on growing here on YouTube. Um, you can always follow us on social media. We're on X, formerly known as Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all of that good stuff. And you can also, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts, give us a five-star review. Uh, if you don't have that option, you can always go over to our website at rising2.com. That's R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O.com. And leave us a review there. We love reading your reviews. We love all of the love and support that you guys have shown us. Guys, we thank you so much. We've been growing so much, uh, and we're going to keep on growing. So. Guys, you guys take care. Again, have fun with all of the NFL divisional round and the UFC fight night this weekend. Have a good one, and we'll see you next time.